Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in the previous session, we have seen the one dimensional arrays and now we will see the two dimensional arrays. So in the previous session, we have seen how to represent or how to identify whether the given array is one dimensional or two dimensional. So based upon the subscript, we can identify whether it is an one dimensional array or two dimensional array. So in this 2D array, there will be two subscripts. Two subscripts. That means this one. And when we will, when we are going to use this two-dimensional array, if you want to display the elements in a row and column order, that means in a tabular format. Whenever we want to display the elements in a tabular way, we can go with this two-dimensional array. To represent elements in rows and columns, rows and columns, right? So, so here the elements will be stored in row wise. Rows, right? So first the row, first row will be uh, filled, and then the next row will be filled. Now, the applications where these two-dimensional arrays will be used for best application for these two-dimensional arrays, matrix multiplications. Sorry, matrix applications. All the matrix applications we can use these two-dimensional arrays, right? So that's the best example. And then here it will also occupy the continuous memory locations but in a row wise. So elements occupy continuous memory locations. See for example if you want to store the data, that means a 2 by 2, 2 by 2, that means 2 rows and 2 columns. So 10, 20, 30 and a 40. If you want to store this data, so the address here also, the accessing, how can, I, how can we access the elements? So these elements can be accessed with the help of index values. So the index of this, this one is 0 0 and this one is 0 1 that means 0 throw 0 th column 0 throw first column and this one is sorry first row 0 th column this one is first row first column so here also the elements will store in row wise so first element second element third element and fourth element so, in the memory allocation, so in the memory, the representation or the storing of this data will be in a single dimensional array, similar to our single dimensional array. See, so 10, 20, 30 and 40. 10, 20, 30 and 40. So, first this element will be occupied. So, 1000, 1002, 1004, 1006. So, this index is 0, 0, this index is 0, 1, this ends the first row, 1, 0, 1, 1, right, so row wise, it will occupy the row wise, so, so first, the, the, the first row will be occupied, then the second row will be occupied, so if you read the elements, then also the data will be stored in such a way, right, so that's why, these elements are also occupying the continuous memory locations, right? It follows the row wise. 
it follows the row wise order right now how to initialize or declare this two dimensional array syntax syntax is similar the data type followed by array name followed by the size of rows row size column size so this is the syntax for the two dimensional array similarly cell example in a 3 and p that implies 3 by 3 matrix it's a 3 by 3 matrix so total nine elements will be stored the number of elements are nine so zero row first row second row zero column first column second column so 00010102101122202122 so in this way the elements will be stored so here also the same manner at the compile time if you want to save the elements in a compile time so open the curly braces so you can write 10 20 30 40 so if you mention this one see total nine elements it can occupy nine elements but we are mentioning only four elements so the data will be stored in row wise order so first row so this is a first row that means the first row index is 0 so 0 through 0th column 0 through first column 0 through second column 3 by 3 right so this will be first row Zeroth column, and all the remaining elements will be zeros. So that means the output is ten, twenty, thirty, forty, zero, 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 zero. Right? Hope you understood this one. So continuous memory location. So so only here only four elements are stored in this array. All the remaining five elements will be occupied with. zeros this is the initialization at compile time if you want to initialize the same array in run time again we have to go with the iterative statements one is for representing the rows another one is for representing the columns see so here we will use the nested for loop for run time initialization so for i is equal to 0 i less than rows i plus plus so this is completely for rows again for j is equal to 0 j less than columns j plus plus this is completely for columns and here c out sorry this is for input function so c in a of i j right so after completion of the inner loop then only the outer loop value will be incremented so first i is equal to 0 j is equal to 0 if if rows and columns is equal to is equal to 3 or simply we can uh, take it as example 2 rows is equal to 2 columns is equal to 2 i is equal to 0 Zero less than two. Condition is true. So inside j is equal to zero. Zero less than two. So a of zero zero will be red. Next, j is updated. So j is equal to one and one less than two. So a of zero and one. Now j is equal to two. Two less than two. False, right? False. Then i will be incremented. Now i is equal to one and one less than two. It is true. So again, j is equal to zero, zero less than two. A of i means one. J means zero. Now j is equal to one, one less than two. A of one and j of one. And j is equal to two, and two less than two is false, 
again i will be incremented to 2 now 2 less than 2 false then the statement the control will come out from the loop so the elements are a00 a01 a10 a11 so four elements will be occupied right so this is how we can initialize the two dimensional arrays at run time in order to display the elements of two dimensional array we have to go with these uh, two for loops so nested for loops so outer for loop represents the rows and inner for loop represents the columns right so hope you understood this one so now we will see the practical uh, working of this two dimensional array by executing the program in the compiler right now let us move on to the compiler hello friends so just now we have seen the two dimensional array so we'll now we'll see the practical implementation of this two dimensional array so the major applications of these two dimensional array is the matrix applications so whenever we want to display or store the data in terms of rows and columns then we can use this two dimensional arrays see first as usual we have to include the header files so include iostream.h and again hash include conio.h so iostream.h is for uh, import including the input and output statement cn and cout conio is for including the clear screen function right we will skip the um, this one uh, declaration part so later we will uh, display the uh, we'll write the declaration part so whatever the variables we are using in the program then later we will declare all those variables now directly i'm writing the logic so see out see here the data is stored in rows and columns so we have to take two inputs enter the number of rows C in rows. Similarly, C out. Enter the number of columns. C in calls. Right. Now we'll write the. We have to read the element. So we'll take a two for loops. Y i is equal to zero. I less than rows. I plus plus, and this is for rows. And now in each and every row, we have to fill the all the columns. So for j is equal to zero, j less than calls j plus plus. So first row, all the columns will be filled, and then next row, all the columns will be filled. Right? So row wise elements will be taken. Now, see here. We'll write uh, one more cout function. So enter the elements. Right. C out. Sorry. C in. This is an input function. C in some a of i and j. Right. Now these functions. I mean these statements will read all the elements. And it will be stored in two-dimensional array in form of rows and columns. Now, how to display this one? Write the same raw logic. So i less than rows, i plus plus. This is for rows. For j is equal to zero, j less than sorry, j less than columns, j plus plus. See here we have to write the output function. A of i, sorry, j. Right. So slash t. I am using the slash t. So that means see after displaying every row, let us. Uh, Right. See. So 
we are we have skipped the declaration part now let us uh, declare this one int i j rows columns and array size of some 10 and 10 so total 100 elements maximum of 100 elements it can store so after the declaration we will clear the screen because it will clear all the previous results so let us save this one to array dot cp so compile this one run this one so enter the number of rows so three rows three columns enter the elements one two three four five six seven eight nine so three into three total nine elements now let us see the output see one two three four five six seven eight and nine so here we can write uh, the cout function so elements of an array <coughs> see here you can observe so three elements three three rows three columns so i am giving one two three four five six seven eight and nine so nine elements i have given now let us check the result so the elements of an array are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So this is how we can uh, implement these two dimensional arrays. The major applications that means where we can use these two dimensional arrays are in a matrix application. That means not only the matrix. So whenever we want to display or organize the data in terms of rows and columns then we can use this two dimensional array right so hope you understood this one a simple topic so let us stop here so if you are having any doubts regarding this two dimensional arrays feel free to post your doubts in the comment section so then definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really understood my sessions like my sessions share my sessions with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much